Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering nimble storage, the power of predictive analytics. Now your host, Jeff Frick and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live in downtown San Francisco at One Kearney at the Nimble Storage Predictive Flash Launch. It's an exciting event. We just had a few key presentations with analysts, customers, some executives, and we're excited for our next guest who's out in the field, you know, getting it done, getting his hands dirty. Uh, Justin Jardina, the CTO of Island Internet Solutions. Welcome, Justin. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, so welcome to theCUBE. So you're here, give everybody a little uh, information on Island, who aren't familiar with the company. Okay, so uh, Island was actually, we've been around for about 26 years now. The company was started in 1995. We have our roots in uh, web hosting, co-location, managed data center services. And really for the first uh, 10 or 11 years of the company, that was the main focus. That got us into about 50 to 60 data centers globally. Uh, in 2007, Wait, how many data centers? 50 to 60. 50 to 60. Uh, that um, and around 2007 is actually when I came on board. And our initial offering was to, before like actually the cloud was a buzzword, was to actually offer a managed and enterprise grade uh, hosting solution based on virtualization technology. So back then we had things like vSphere 3.5, and we saw the really the dawn of all this virtualization stuff. But again, the main focus was to uh, start taking the, some of these footprints out of these larger data centers, virtualize them, but also giving an enterprise level um, experience to the customer. So what does that mean? Like things like VPNs, firewalling, multi-tenancy, things of that nature. So if you fast forward between 2007 and where we're at today, uh, our main focus is infrastructure as a uh, service still, disaster recovery as a service. Uh, we actually won some uh, Gardner uh, and Forrester um, uh, things like the Magic Quadrant around DR as a service. And then last year we launched our infrastructure as a service with advanced security platform. So in this platform you can do things like host VMs and whatnot, but we offer a whole suite of security services on top. So for instance, if you fail over to the Island Cloud or run a workload in the Island Cloud, you get things like intrusion detection, vulnerability scanning, antivirus, and so forth. And I promise this is the last thing I'll say, but the, on That's top right. of that we have our what we call our cloud console. So we have so many underlying pieces of infrastructure and APIs, things like vCenter, you know, Nessus, Trend, Veeam, the whole gamut of uh, the ecosystem. Um, and what we've done is we, we created an overlying platform on top of all this using big data and predictive an analytics so that when you're a customer of Island, you basically have a one-stop shop and one, spot, one pane of glass in front of all this infrastructure. Yeah. Wow, so that was a lot of information, Justin. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering if you'll unpack for us a little bit. Going from you know, a managed hosting company um, to an infrastructure as a service provider. I mean, yes. that, that's a very different skill set. Yes. Um, and you know, if you look at the value stack of what you're offering to your users, I mean, you're you're ordering, offering a lot more value, and they're usually expecting you know pretty low prices. So can can you talk to, through us, you know? why you guys went through that transformation, what it took to go through the transformation, you know, did you wholesale when you brought in, bring in new people, or right. you know, how, how did that all go, come to be? So I think, I mean, uh, you know, if, you, if you rewind back to 2005, we started seeing things in the data center, like power and space, uh, price, uh, things like that started diminishing. And then we really started seeing the uh, uprising of virtual environments. So you started to see people in the enterprise say, oh, well, I have this web server, or I have this, low-key application that I'm going to virtualize now. You know, I'm going to go ahead and, and try this, uh, whether it was on the initial offering from VMware, VMware Server, or actually uh, ESX. And as far as the company goes, I mean, having roots in the hosting business and the data center business, it was actually not as hard as you would think because understanding that level of business, understanding things like SLAs, understanding customer support in remote data center environments really was a catalyst for us to, to get this. The, the trick was how do we take and, and put out to the world the message of, okay, remember when you had a 2U server and you had 50 of those in Iraq? Well, hey, you don't need that anymore we can give you this infrastructure at a, at a reasonable cost as well as a high SLA. All right, so you've now got a global footprint with this. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what does your IT staff look like? What kind of skill sets do they have? And how many people do you have managing all these environments? Okay, so the, our company is rather small. Uh, we only have about 60 people. Um, but I'll say that the, the success of our company goes back to our staff. We have a, a bunch, a bunch of very, very smart people. 
uh, and these people have uh, allowed us to be able to automate things, to be able to really take advantage of all these APIs I talk about, and really automate and streamline the IT process. So we can, if we want to get into it in the conversation, we can talk about how we term our pods and how we could take advantage of what technology is out there today. Uh, but we're very uh, lean and mean. Yeah, so I guess how much of that has been in-house built and how much are you leveraging you know, open source tools and uh, various projects that are out there? That's great, so uh, as far as the underlying infrastructure, we're a Cisco UCS shop. As you know, we're a nimble shop. Uh, we do with the major vendors out there, Veeam, Zerto, VMware, and we do leverage their technology. The value we bring to the table is that we have developed a whole middleware platform of, on top of all these uh, infrastructures, and we've written our own code using 100% open source software uh, that we developed in-house, it's not something we uh, outsourced or anything, that actually talks to all these APIs and endpoints, and then we abstract all that data in our uh, data warehouse, and we've actually written an API in front of our data warehouse that you can either program if you're a programmer, or our portal can leverage this data to provide the analytics and data that a, that a customer would need. Okay, and so how much do you leverage the predictive analytics that, uh, that Nimble has? So for Nimble, I would say the InfoSight really plays true to the uh, operation side of our business, meaning the guys who are running the underlying infrastructure. What I will say though is that when we leverage our own uh, code and we can leverage Nimble's API, vCenter API, we're actually looking at all this data and presenting it, presenting it to the customer so that they can make an intelligent decision. And that may turn into things like latency or IOPS from a storage level, or try to really compare that a VM is having trouble, where, where is that trouble, right? All right, can you talk to us a little bit about your users and how they're thinking about the services you offer? Are sure. many of them ones that you had with hosting? You know, what do they think of the likes of Amazon and Azure? How, how do those play into what you're doing? Sure, so I mean, you know, you, you'll hear me say this uh, many times. I think uh, Azure, uh, Amazon, Rackspace, I think those are all great services. Um, we're not out to, to pick fights with uh, competing vendors, but we bring a, a different level of service to the table or as a cloud provider than some of these other providers can provide. And what I mean by that is our full suite of products. So whereas uh, you know, a traditional user may go to Amazon and spin up an instance and it's got a public IP, we really don't see that as a need for enterprises. They may have a use case for that, but what an enterprise comes to us for is, hey, I have mission critical applications, I need things like an SLA, I need to be guaranteed uptime, I need to be guaranteed performance. And oh, by the way, I have this multi-tenant application, it's on totally different networks, I have a load balancer, I have VPNs, these very complex architectures. So what we bring to the table is we can uh, entertain those types of deals using uh, software-based stacks, software-based networking, and the whole gamut of things we can get into, but that's where we differentiate ourselves in the cloud. And so are you helping them migrate some of that legacy stuff into your cloud to operate it as a cloud? Definitely. So we partner with uh, Veeam and Zerto, so sometimes customers will leverage those technologies to migrate into the cloud, but we've also, bit, we've also written internally a way for a customer to actually maybe uh, create an OVA from vCenter or Hyper-V or export a VM from Hyper-V and actually import that into our cloud. But we also, what's a little bit different about us is we also allow the reverse to be true. So whereas you hear about the Hotel California uh, thing with Amazon, you can go in <laughs> but you can never leave. Uh, with us, we actually allow the customer to import and export from the cloud. Well, the, the other conversation we have a lot is, you know, obviously Greenfield, new applications, you know, new opportunities, it's easy to spin it up, make it you know, kind of cloud native, but there's all this old stuff that's running, that's running businesses that may right. or may not make sense to migrate to a cloud, may or may right. not make sense to get the, that cloud economics, but in theory, if you could easily, you know, cloud economics offers a, a lot of benefits, but it's this migration issue that uh, yeah, is not easy. That's what we hear a lot of, about uh, when customers come to us. You know, they, there's cloud native applications. So we run an open source product called Cassandra, and this is the back end and powerhouse of our, of our data warehouse, right? That application is made to be in uh, a, a something like Amazon. So for instance, there's multiple nodes, nodes can fail, you don't get that kind of stuff with Exchange, right? You may be able to set up an HA cluster, or with SQL you may be able to do HA, but it's not cloud native. So what we're starting to see is A, the larger vendors are coming up with scalable applications to do that, but for the time being, guys that are in the enterprise on legacy applications, we're making it easy for them to get it into the cloud, also extend their data center into us. They might be a VPN or maybe a private line. 
and really helping them accommodate that move so they feel less uh, like, hey, I'm putting this somewhere and you know, I have no control over it. Yeah. So Justin, I'm wondering if you can speak a little bit about the partnerships of some of your infrastructure providers. So you know, obviously Nimble, but you're also heavily involved with VMware and Cisco. Yes. Uh, does Cisco InterCloud, VMware vCloud Air Network, you know, are those tie into what you're doing? And you know, they're, they're kind of early in their journey to cloud, and I'm, I'm curious how, how, how the partnerships with those three companies specifically work. Definitely, so we're a Cisco CMSP, we're also a VMware vCloud Air Network uh, provider. Uh, we've been working with VMware for a long time, we drank the Kool-Aid with the vCloud Director 1.x, and we've been developing against it for a number of years now. Uh, what I can say is that uh, Cisco ICF and InterCloud um, footprint actually brings a different level of service for a customer, it's got specific needs, it's, it's great for the, the user base. Also vCloud Director, there's a lot of native integration between vCenter and vCloud Air Partners and things like that. Uh, and we, we understand that, so we want to be open to the technologies that these vendors are providing to their customers. At the same time, the challenge for us is to provide that single overlay that we've been talking about. Meaning, for instance, if you're doing DR with VMware Zerto, we want to be able to show you all the metrics around your DR event. We want you to be able to press a button in our portal that says go ahead and fail over and all those things. So we hook into all these vendors' APIs and we extract the data and then have yeah. a common presentation. So, so it brings up, I guess so many people think of a company like yours and they say, well, can't you just use you know, white box switching, KVM you know, virtualization and some software-based you know, cheaper Storage, right. you know, why, why Nimble, Cisco, and, and, and right. VMware? So, I mean, that's exactly right. As I said before, we're a, a pretty mean and lean staff. Uh, there's no argument out there that, you know, the VMware uh, technology is tried and true. I mean, uh, we, we rely on this every day. And if we can access it programmatically, it really, you know, we take out that, uh, that idea of, uh, you know, hiring a staff just to run, like, say, a Ceph cluster or a Swift instance. Now, I, don't, I personally don't think there's anything wrong uh, with those technologies. It's just for Island, we needed to stick with that. The second thing about that is when we need to provide a high-level SLA and when customers sign contracts with us that say, you need to perform this way and there's no deviation from that, you can understand why we have to go to the to the, some of the better players. All right, so, so you said the companies run on blood, sweat, and tears. Sounds like you guys <laughs> have a lot on your plate. Yet, you still have time uh, to uh, you know, volunteer uh, as a, it says systems admin for open source community projects. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, I, uh, I'm from Houston. I'm originally from New Orleans, but uh, my wife and I moved to Houston after the, the hurricane. Uh, and we started the Houston Ubuntu Users Group. So uh, we keep a mailing list, the meetings are not as, as much as we would like them to be, but the idea is to help people uh, onboard into Ubuntu. Uh, we're a very heavy uh, Linux shop over at iLand. As I mentioned, our entire platform, other than the vendor stuff like VMware, is built on open source technology, and it's just a way for us to give back. We also, I, didn't, I don't have it on my uh, LinkedIn, of course, but our developers and our developer community also submit uh, they actually take one day a month to totally devote themselves to the open source projects that they work on. So we're very, very involved in giving back to what's freely given to us. That, that, that's excellent, thank you for yeah. you know, c contributing to the community. So give us kind of your perspective on how things on the ground have changed with customers. You know, the cloud thing's been going on for a while, and big data and analytics and mobile's long on its path. What are some of the conversations you're having with customers? Where are they on their journey? Um, in this whole process, and and, and wonder if you can share some of the insight that you see. So I can say that when uh, we started in 2007, it was very dev and test and putting your toe in the water style things. Nowadays, that conversation is really not even on the table. The conversation is, you know, hey, how can I bring this complex situation to the cloud? Not can you run SAP or can you run Oracle? The customer or the user base that we're seeing has actually bought off on it. When they find a cloud provider like us, they're actually able to get what they want from a contract perspective, can see the performance of things like that. Uh, what also is great too is that the industry and the community in general is building the tools to actually make hybrid cloud uh, be an actual thing, right? So we're starting to see things like you mentioned Cisco ICF. Whether or not you're a Cisco shop and whether you not believe in their vision, they give you a very nice packaged thing to say, okay, I'm going to put this secure switch in the cloud, I know how to connect to it, I can extend my prem to the cloud. And that's just one example of actual um, uh, vendors being able to make that easier. So I think uh, the, the, the discussion about should I, shouldn't I go is now when. 
right, uh, right. Ranch Agar. Well, Justin, thanks for uh, stopping by, spending a few minutes with us. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Justin Jardina from iLand Internet Solutions. I'm Jeff Frick. He's Stu Miniman. We are at the Nimble Storage Predictive Flash Launch in downtown San Francisco. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching.